Okay, so for this video we're going to have a look at using enthems. Um, so I would obviously suggest watching the previous video on actually finding enthems or sequences first, but we're going to have a look at how we can actually use them in different types of scenarios in this uh, video here today. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to start having a look at this one. So it says find the 20th term in the sequence, and it starts to give us start the start of a sequence. And obviously what we could do is just see what it's going up by and keep writing it, but if we're trying to find the 50th or the 100th term, it's not a very efficient way of us doing that. So we're going to actually have a look at how we can use Use the nth term to find the answer to this. So first of all we're going to actually find the nth term of this sequence. So to start with we note that it goes up in threes. So the start of our nth term is going to be 3n which means it's related to the three times table. And obviously using our little trick we can go backwards so take away three and that gives us positive one here. So it's 3n plus one. Now thinking about what that means, and I've mentioned it in the previous video, and that means the 3 times table but with 1 added on. Now if we want to find the 20th term in the sequence, all we actually really have to do is sub 20 into this expression here. So n is going to become 20, or 3 times 20, it's obviously the 20th term in the 3 times table is 3 times 20. So if we do 3 times 20, so I'm going to sub that in, 3 lots of 20, but then we just need to add 1 to that. So 3 lots of 20 is 60. And add 1 to that gives us 61. And that's how we can find numbers in a sequence quite quickly there. Okay, so sub, find the nth term, sub the number in, and then obviously just write down what that uh, number in the sequence is. But let's have a look at another one. Okay, so find the 50th term in a sequence. So again, let's find the nth term. So it goes up in sixes. So that's going to be 6n. And then we need to just go backwards, applying that little trick. So minus 6 and we get minus 4. So our nth term is 6n minus 4. Now again, we're trying to find the 50th term, so we're just going to sub 50 in place of the n, and we get 6 lots of 50, 6 lots of 50, take away 4. 6 times 50 is 300, and 300 take away 4 leaves us with 296 as our 50th term in the sequence. Now we're going to have a look at something ever so slightly different for the last one here. Okay, so this question says a sequence has an nth term of 2n squared plus 5. Find the 10th term in the sequence. So obviously we've got a different nth term here. This is a quadratic sequence, but we're going to approach it in exactly the same way. Now it does have a little n squared there, but it's already given us the nth term. So we've not had to find the nth term of this sequence. It's just been given to us, and it does look a little bit different to the previous two. But we're just going to apply it in the same way. So if we want to find the 10th term, we just need to sub 10 in. So if we sub 10 in, we've got two lots of... 10 squared, n squared, 10 squared, and then add 5. Okay, so obviously remembering, remembering your order of operations here, you've got to work out the powers first, which is why I've put the 10 squared in the brackets, not to forget to work that out first. So 10 squared is 100. I'm just going to write that there, 10 squared is 100. So 2 times 100, working out this bit, would be 200, and then add 5 would give us 205. There you go. So a little bit of rules on substitution there. Obviously, don't forget to check out the video on substitution if that's thrown you at all. But just being careful to sub that number in. So we've sub 10 in place of the n. That's n squared. So 10 squared was 100. Two lots of that is 200. And then add 5 at the end for 205. Okay. Right, here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's two questions. Have a go at both of these. Pause the video there. We'll go with the answer in a sec. Okay, so the first one is find the 30th term in the sequence. So if we find the nth term, it goes up in 4s, so it's 4n. Go back 4 would give us minus 1, so it's 4n minus 1. Subbing in 30, we get 4 lots of 30, or 4 times 30, take away 1. 4 times 30 is 120, and 120 take away 1 gives us the 30th term of 119. There we go, and there's our 30th term. On to the next one. A sequence has an nth term 2n squared minus 9. Find the 20th term. So we have 2 lots of n squared, which is 20, so 20 squared. So 2 lots of 20 squared, take 9. So first of all, let's work out 20 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. Add the two zeros, it's 400. So we have 2 lots of 400, take away 9. 2 lots of 400 is 800. So 800, take 9 which leaves us with 791. There we go. And that is the 20th term in that sequence. Right, let's have a look at something slightly different. Okay, so this question says, is the number 51 in this sequence? Now again, we could keep writing and see if 51 appears, but we can actually just use the nth term again to actually figure out a question like this. Is the, num is the number 51 in the sequence? So if we find the nth term, okay, it goes up in fours, so it's 4n, 
and then back four again gives us minus one, so four n minus one. Now there's our nth term. What we could do is we could just sub numbers in, see if we get 51, you know, sub 10 in, that'd be 40, take away one is 39, and just keep trialing and erroring it. But actually we can take a quick approach again. Now if we wanna know if 51's ever in the sequence, we wanna know, is there a number that I can sub into there that ever equals 51? And I can make that statement just by writing an equation. So I can just say, well, does four n minus one, does that ever equal 51? Okay, so does 4n minus 1 equal 51? And if we go about trying to solve this, let's see what we get. So if we add 1 to both sides, we get 4n equals 52. And then solving this just like a normal equation, divide by 4. So divide by 4, and we get n equals and 52 divided by 4 is 13. There we go. So we get n equals 13. Now what we found out there is that if we sub the number 13 in in place of n, that would give us 52. And you can go back and check it. 4 times 13 uh, gives us sorry, it gives us 52. And then when you take away 1, you get the 51. So there we go. When we sub 13 in, we do get 51. So yes, we would say 51 is in the sequence, and we could even say it's the 13th term in the sequence there. Let's have a look at one where maybe it's not in the sequence and how we would determine that. Okay, so this question says, is the number 49 in this sequence and explain your reasoning? And this is slightly different because if you actually have a look at the sequence here, it goes 2, 7, 12, 17, 22. So actually all the numbers here end in 2s and 7s and that's going to continue no matter how far we go there. So actually we could say straight away, well, no, actually it's not in the sequence because 49 ends in a 9 and all the numbers in this sequence are going to end in a 7 or a 2. But let's actually look at proving it using a bit of algebra, even though we know it's already not going to be in there. So let's have a look. It goes up in 5s. There we go. So we know it's 5n. And if we go back 5, we get negative 3. So 5n minus 3. Now, taking the same approach, if we set this equal to 49, so does it ever equal 49? We should see here that something different is going to happen. So add the 3 to reverse that, take away 3. And that gives us 5n equals 52. Now, at this point here, if we put divide by 5, 52 divided by 5 is not a whole number, and actually it comes out as 10 and 2 fifths. There you go, 10 and 2 fifths. Or if you're doing this on the calculator, you could say that's 10.4. Okay, so as it comes out as not a whole number, it doesn't come out as an integer, 10.4, we would say no. Okay, okay, it's the 10.4th term, or it's in between the 10 and the 11th term there. So it's not a term in the sequence. 49 is definitely not going to be in the sequence. Okay, right, here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so two questions, pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so it's 64 in the sequence. So this sequence here goes up in sixes, so it's 6n. And if we go back six from four, it's minus two. So 6n minus two. We set that equal to 64 and solve that. We get 6n equals add 2 is 66, and divide by 6, we get n equals 11. So the answer would be yes, it's the 11th term. On to the next one, is 87 a term in the sequence? Well, this sequence here goes up in 3s, so it's 3n. Back 3 from 4 is positive 1, so 3n plus 1. Set that equal to 87, does it ever equal 87? Take away 1, we get 3n equals 86, and then we need to try and divide that by 3. Now, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so we can always do a little bit of division to the side. We can do 86, divide by 3. 3 goes into 8 twice, remainder 2. And 3 goes into 26 8 times, up to 24. But with a remainder, so we'd have to put a decimal in. And the remainder's 2. And then we end up getting point something. Now, that was enough, enough working out there just to prove the fact that it's not a whole number. n equals 86 over 3. Okay, not an integer, an integer being a whole number, so not an integer. There we go, so my answer would be no. Okay, so you don't actually have to actually work out that word, um, that division perfectly, it's more just proving the fact that it's not a whole number and therefore not in the sequence. Okay, so that is using nth terms for finding terms in the sequence and proving if numbers are in a sequence. But if you found that useful, if it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.